again now in this part of the video we will going to discuss about the different types of the immunoglobin and what are the functions performed by these immunoglobins so the structure of immunoglobin that's a basic structure forming the heavy chain and the constant light chains of the immunoglobin we have discussed in a separate video after discussing the structure we will going to discuss how this immunoglobin are formed and what are the specific function of a different type of immunoglobin the B lymphocyte that is present in the human body, it, it is released from the bone marrow at the site of a lymphoid tissue where the immune response has to take place. So this B lymphocyte, when is activated by the antigen, this B lymphocyte will going to produce a cell that we call as the plasma cell. And the production rate of the plasma cell is so high that there are about 500 plasma cells will be released at a time. So when certain different types of the many plasma cells have been released from the activated B lymphocyte from the any antigen or the pathogen, then what the function of the plasma cell? This plasma cell has nothing to do with the immune response, but it can produce the certain type of antibodies. These antibodies that we have discussed are the immunoglobins and these immunoglobins are basically of different types, including the immunoglobin M, the aminoglobin G, the aminoglobin A, and the aminoglobin E. These are some of the important and the major aminoglobins. Some of the books says that there is a presence of aminoglobin D that is very little or real in our body. So these aminoglobin in turn cause the effect in the immunity and they are the precursors or they are the fighters against the immune response. Now we are going to discuss what are the functions of these different aminoglobin and how much percentage is this aminoglobin is present in our body now i have prepared notes for you guys to make it easy explain well so coming to the function of the aminoglobin g that is the most widely aminoglobin present in our body this is the main antibody in a secondary response what is secondary response? So do not worry about this. It is a very simple thing. The primary response of the immune system is that when the antigen causes the immune response. This is the primary response at the first time. But when there is an immune reaction against the same antigen at the second time, this is called as the secondary response. So the secondary response is much earlier and faster than the primary response because there have been antibodies produced because of the primary response. So this aminoglobin G is performing a greater role in the secondary response. Now it is increases in the chronic diseases. It, the chronic diseases that are not acute that can be processed for further days or months. These aminoglobin G will be increased in that person who having the chronic disease to fight against that disease. It is involved in the opsonization that I have discussed in a video of immune, immune response or uh, in phagocytosis video that what is opsonization it is a certain reading of the uh, antigen to be phagocytosed by the uh, WBCs so this opsonization is produced from the aminoglobin G and the complement fixation reactions neutralization of bacteria or, or all of these responses are produced due to the aminoglobin G this aminoglobin G can also cross the placenta. This is a very important point and you should learn that point that where it often come in the MCQs that which aminoglobin cross the placenta. So this is the aminoglobin G that cross the placenta from the fetus to the mother. Now coming to the second aminoglobin that is the aminoglobin M. It is the largest aminoglobin but present in our body is about 5 to 10 percent. Because it is a pentameric structure, that's why it is the largest aminoglobin. Now, there is a first antibody to appear in the serum when an antigen is injected. It means that it is the first to produce in the primary response that I have discussed earlier. That the first response against the any antigen is produced from the aminoglobin M. This aminoglobin M is important in autoimmune diseases in which there is a production of antibody against the own body. Now coming to the infections, it increases in the acute infections, that's why this is also called as the hemolysin. This aminoglobin M is also called as the hemolysin. It prevents against the gram-negative bacteria. The aminoglobin A is present in our body about 10 to 15 percent. And the most important point of the aminoglobin A is it is present in most of the body secretions, including the milk, tears, prostate secretions, 
peritoneal fluid and it prevents the attachment of bacteria to the mucous membrane. That's why its aminoglobin A is also involved in the first line of defense that we have discussed in separate video of lines of defense in the reticular endothelial system. That's why because it is present in the mucous membrane of all the cavities and all the fluid part of our body. Also, it provides the infant immunity. It provides the immunity in infants. This aminoglobin A. Now, the next one is the aminoglobin D that I have discussed is the rare aminoglobin and it is present is in about 0.2% in our body. It increases in the chronic conditions. This aminoglobin D is present on the receptors of the B cell and activate the antimicrobial factor to participate in the immune response. So this thing don't you have to worry about. It's a deep part of thing. But the receptors of the B cell attached with the aminoglobin D. This point is very important to remember. The last one is the aminoglobin E. It is present about 0.002%. It is very much less in our amount in our body, but it is present for mostly the allergic and the hypersensitivity reactions. That's why it mediates the immediate hypersensitivity reactions by causing the release of a histamine that is a neurotransmitter for the allergic response. And its histamine is released from the mast cells and the basophil when the amyloglobin attaches on these cells or causes the allergy. It depend, uh, it defend against the hemolytic and the worm infections. This aminoglobin E is also involved in parasitic infections or the worm infections. So this was the general explanation, and I hope you'll be explained well because I have prepared no notes for you guys about every aminoglobin and the functions of aminoglobin, so you can easily remember by the main and important points. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.